Our guest today in the world after coronavirus is Thomas Piketty. He is at the Paris School of Economics and the author most recently of Capital and Ideology. And I'm going to ask him what he thinks the future of inequity might look like in a post-COVID world. First of all, you know, of course, it's not over and, and we don't know, you know, exactly how the epidemic is going gonna, is gonna to spread, uh, you know, in the various countries, in the South in particular. You know, nobody knows um, exactly, you know, how this is going to evolve in the next three months or six months or nine months. So it's, it's impossible to say. What we already know is that within rich countries, uh, you know, the pandemic is now eating much more strongly, you know, the, the most fragile socioeconomic groups, you know, we've been neglecting for a long time, you know, investment in hospitals, in public services. Today, we are sort of paying also the, the, the price for that. So at this stage, what we see is that uh, we see the consequences of this, uh, of this inequality. Now, hopefully, at least we learn from this experiment and this will have an impact on our sort of broader view of, of uh, what needs to be changed. What are the type of lessons, policy lessons, that you hope the world will learn in living through this crisis? I hope we learn that you know, we need to reinvest in, in hospital, our public health system, but more generally that we need to invest in our welfare state. You know, by and large, you know, the northern countries have developed a welfare state, but they have sort of interrupted the development of this welfare state in the 1980s, 1990s, and they have sort of frozen the, their total level of funding to the welfare state around that time. And, you know, I think we have to to, 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 to resume, you know, to, to continue the, the historical process of developing the welfare state by which I mean in general, you know, access to fundamental goods, including uh, health, uh, education, uh, income support, uh, uh, you know, pension. And, and, and of course, in, in the South, in the countries that have not yet developed anything like a welfare state, you know, I hope, you know, that this crisis could be, could act like an accelerator. I want to be optimistic. One of the lessons from my book, uh, latest book, Capital and Ideology, is that Crises like this one can sometimes deliver uh, a change in the dominant ideologies. I hope this crisis can 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 get us uh, can get us in this direction, and and more generally, you know, can help us understand that we need to develop um, um, an, an economic system, an international economic order, and a, and a regulation of globalization that brings us to a more equitable and also sustainable. Uh, development model uh, for, for the future. What is the policy landscape that you see in terms of how countries will deal with COVID and uh, post-COVID inequity? The huge rise of public debt, which has been ongoing for a number of decades, but which COVID is going to accelerate, you know, at some point we'll have to do something. And, and over a certain level, you have to do something quite exceptional and quite Unorthodox, you know, in a way. So, both, you know, after World War One, after World War Two, many European countries and and also in Japan, you know, invented system, for instance, of exceptional uh, tax on large private wealth holdings, uh, one of uh, progressive tax on very high uh, uh, private wealth. You know, it was up to fifty percent of the stock of top. Uh, private wealth was 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 taxed away in Germany up to 80% in Japan and at the same time the middle class and the lower wealth group were protected because you had a progressive wealth tax schedule going from 0% to 50 or 80% and you know retrospectively it was probably one of the most successful example uh, in history of how you get rid of a large uh, uh, public debt and I can see today well I could already see to the you know before the covid crisis the increasing popularity of the wealth tax. So for now, interest rates are low, there's no financial panic, and everything looks easy with the central banks doing most of the work. But you know, at some point, you cannot address all issues with the central bank. You also need a, a tax system. When you look towards the world after COVID, what are your biggest fears? So COVID in itself is making the world more inequitable. And there's also a risk 
that COVID reinforces some kind of nationalism. You know, some, that's what you've seen with pandemics in the distant past is that sometimes it reinforces the fear of strangers, the fear of other people. And then you, this will, this could reinforce political parties that want to close borders. And that, you know, that I, I can see that. But at the same time, you know, there are other forces. You know, COVID will reinforce the legitimacy for public investment in hospital and, and uh, basic uh, infrastructure. You know, I think everybody will realize that you know, we didn't have the medical supplies that we need, we didn't have the mask, we didn't have the number of hospital beds which, which we thought we had, in particular in rich countries. So I think you know, this will have an impact in this direction. So you know, we'll, we'll see how things will change.